The Book of Remembrance of IG Introduction The Words of Gokul Hiram III An Account of a Vision of Achi as seen by Gokul Hiram III concerning the first great war in heaven. Now behold, listen and learn a great mystery of life. Yea, learn how to determine a godly lifestyle and a clean heart. Those of you who are in the midst of a wicked world awake and behold the knowledge of God in the last days and be empowered over sin and be endowed unto righteousness and oneness with God in your daily walk. Search out these things, for they have been hidden from you, but now they have come before your eyes, and those who desire to serve God and have groped to find a way have come upon a blessing from the hand of God. And it came to pass that as, that as I sat before the urn, and I looked, and I saw a sun-bathed gentle hillside, and as I looked about to see, I realized I was seeing where Adam and Eve dwelt in Eden. And Eve was sitting on a rock with her feet in clear water. And it came to pass that a falling star streaked across the heavens and lit up the evening as bright as day and the meteorite landed with a crash and a smoke of burning near to the place where Eve was and Eve was frightened this was her first experience with fear and with a shriek she fled from before it and it came to pass that as I looked and I beheld the iridescent rock in the middle of the hillside with its skid mark from its crater from its landing. Now as I beheld, a strange thing happened, and I began to hear the thoughts and feel the feelings of the things in the scene through the eyes of God, and their private feelings and speech with one another were made known to me. And I was amazed, for here in the midst of the presence of the Holy Great One and Elder were rocks and clumps of grass and flowers and bushes scattered about. With the dark, multicolored, iridescent rock in the middle, and they all knew each other, but the meteorite was a stranger. And the wind and the hill and the stream conversed amongst themselves. But the rock lay silently dazed at the sudden change that had come upon him, and he intruded upon them, and they felt the violence of his arrival, and all that were there were quiet in his presence, and they held their peace. And it came to pass that as new days dawned, all could behold his many colors as they shone forth from him and changed with the movement of the light of God. And after a while, the rock stranger spoke to them all. And I could feel that in his heart, he felt unsure of himself. And he felt a little afraid and insecure by his travel suddenly coming to an end as he burst forth into a world that was unknown to him. And I beheld as he felt inferior, and he spoke with a bluffing tone, and he said, I am better than all of you. I am a traveler, and I have wandered the far reaches of creation, and my name is Samyaza, which means, my name has seen, for I have seen the wonders that lie beyond. But who are you? You have always just lain here upon this hillside. My mother 
is a comet and she travels whatever so she chooses and has no fixed course like the lowly sun and stars and heavenly bodies I am beautiful and colored with iridescence but you are just plain old brown and gray rocks and your mother is an old broken down mountain and it came to pass that all that were before him were embarrassed at his haughtiness and they were ashamed before his presence of the great holy one and at first if they had legs they would have fled before from before him just as Eve did but as time passed some of the younger rocks began to desire to hear of his wonders and of his travels and they were attracted to his talk and desired to be associated with his appearance and it came to pass that the wind began to bear the message to send the news abroad that in the midst of Eden in the presence of God there was one who would compare and place the value of worth above another and all creation in Eden for the first time was introduced to the sin of superiority and judgment of value it was being thrust upon living souls and thus the seeds of racism and war and death were beginning to be sown and all who did not pay him heed to listen and partake of his haughtiness they were pure and holy and they stood firm with the vision of their created purpose but some rocks began to relent and they began to desire to listen to the rock stranger and his rebellion against God and the thing greatly troubled all of Eden for it was known to all of them that every hill and every tree and every stream and rock were created by the loving hand of the Son of God to be a marvelous work and a wonder in his sight and he did not divide his love in so much that he would love one above another but Semyaza rebelled and he would that he could pretend to hide the oneness of God now understand that what passed between all these before me were not words that are familiar with man in his temporal state but they spoke to one another by the power of the feelings of their hearts that resulted in them receiving life in the day of their creation and it came to pass that in time some of the rocks believed Semyaza and they were influenced by him and began to feel ashamed of their mothers and began to view their lives as dull and of no value compared to the multicolored traveler and those who were drawn to him began to ask him to rehearse the wonders of his travels to them and they began to hold him up as the most important rock upon the hillside or even in all the regions round about and it came to pass that those whom he confided in listened to the grand adventures he told and began to feel superior to those around them that chose not to pay him heed and in the course of those days they became dissatisfied with their visions of their created purpose and Semyaza said to a rock beside him how are you called little one and he answered my name is Artigov which means the earth is power for all things are created by the power of the love of God in the earth and Semyaza replied oh no that will never do you are copper and you were created to rule over all the hosts of men and you can be great in the sight of all the earth for you shall bring them pleasure and power in abundance and they will greatly desire desire you and worship you 
And in this thing, the love of God is done away. And in this manner, did Simeaza give all who would listen to him lying visions, and he prospered and practiced in the midst of holy Eden and in the sight of God. And it came to pass that after Simeaza began to corrupt the visions of any who would listen, that Eve came upon this scene. For she had become frightened when Simeaza landed, and she had not come this way for some time. And as Eve walked some distance away from all this, she heard the rocks talking about the rock stranger, and she felt a division between them. Some were drawn to Simeaza, and some were repulsed by his rebellions against God, and they loved God, and they would not displease him. And Eve, as she drew near, she felt as though she must choose between them. Finally, after a time, she felt curious. And she went meekly and shyly up to a bush and peeked around it at the rock stranger and he was beautiful she had never seen an iridescent rock like him before and he was exotic to his surroundings and he talked and acted like he was from far away where eve had never been no mountain had any rock like him and eve listened as Simeaza told his stories of grandeur and she felt drawn to him because he was from far away and he was beautiful. These two feelings had never entered the heart of Adam before and his rib was created to be the feelings of his heart made flesh and she was afraid for she felt a part of herself become a stranger to her husband and as it happened Adam began to notice that all the rocks were not acting towards Eve as they had before. Some were quiet around her, and in his heart, he began to sense a division among them and between himself and Eve. And this was a new and very alien feeling, never before to confront him, and he was troubled. And it came to pass that Adam told Eve never to visit the rock stranger again and he said I sense a division and the thing surely will displease God and the rocks among the Ergadershi the holy watchers upon hearing Adam who was made in the image of God began to be greatly ashamed And they were thus the first in the earth to cry out for a redeemer, and they wept. And they cried out for one who could deliver them from their shame. For it was one in their midst, even one of their own kind, that had first dishonored the love of God, and brought a division into the abode of God. And from that day, the rocks, of the Erkadershi have ceased not to cry out and continually before the face of the great holy one for one who for one who will redeem them and erase their stain and pollution in the midst of the paradise of God and Abedel was the first to bring their voices unto the ears of God re requesting him to bring salvation and they cried God come and save us for our shame is too great for us to bear why why oh God did it have to be one of our own kind who brought this great dishonor upon us in your sight and God said I will have a son and by his hand I will send Michael who is one anointed to save you for there is coming a great war in heaven and it came to pass that Simeaza began to be lifted up in his own eyes and he took great delight in the pleasure of his own glory and he prophesied and said I shall be a many named one yea 
even the Son of God. And in the course of the earth, he indeed came to have many names to describe his filthiness. For he is called Semyaza, Satan, Belial, Phosphor, Beelzebub, Prince of Darkness, and Melchiorisa. And he began to fight against God, insomuch that he took it upon himself to reveal a vision of his own glory. To any of the watchers who would listen, and he were, would proclaim with great and swelling acclamations that the visions of created purpose given by God to some watchers were unsatisfactory. And he would lie and invent for them a new vision of self-glory. Now, the Lord God, when he created all things, has seen that all things were good, and Semyaza had been created with a good and wonderful vision, and his vision of purpose for him was for him to see the glory of God as it fills the immensity of creation, and to be the herald of the preeminence and legitimacy of the word of his power because Messiah was indeed what his name has seen but this watcher reject, rejected this great vision and he would not honor the word of his power and he invented a lie to replace it and now he claimed to be the herald of power of the legitimacy over the world of pleasure And it came to pass that one by one he began to replace the visions of any who would listen to his lies, and thus he became known as the father of lies. Now the Lord God had asked Adam and Eve to dress the garden and to keep it, and Adam often spoke to all the Ergodershi, and he besought them to remain faithful to God in all their doings. And it came to pass, one day, Eve, Eve approached a part of the garden where she had not been, and she came upon a serpent that was many-colored and iridescent, and had an appearance much like to Semyaza. And she had been obedient to the will of God, and had obeyed Adam, and did not visit the rock stranger any more. But a subtle change had occurred in her heart. And she found that she could be attracted for the first time to something for how it looked. And because it felt like it was from far away. And since she had peeked at Semyaza, she had this change in her heart. And it stayed with her. Now the serpent, whose name was Nakash, which means to diligently observe, to see, that the will of God is done was a good and holy watcher among the Ergodershi and it was gentle and harmless and it had legs but when Eve saw and loved Nakash these two subtle pollutants were in her heart for Nakash was like unto Semyaza in his appearance and Eve in her heart innocently felt drawn in her love for Nakash to love him because he was beautiful to look upon and because he was exotic to her and she was unaccustomed to seeing one after his manner and because Eve associated Nakash in her heart with Semyaza Semyaza was able to speak to her by the mouth of the serpent with subtleties and it came to pass that Semyaza said to Eve by the mouth of Nakash, Eve, you know not that God is better than you. And Eve replied, I know God is good and he is holy. And Semyaza said, There is a tree in the midst of the garden called cedar, which is given its life by the feelings of God that feel the vision of your greatness. And this tree sees all the delightful things 
in our vision of created purpose. And Eve said, I know I am the rib of my husband. And Semyaza said, God is better than you, for he knows to distinguish between good and evil. And if you partake of this tree, you will become like God, and you too can know how to distinguish between good and evil. And Eve said, God has forbidden, forbidden that we should partake of this tree, and if we should do so, we should surely fail. And Semyaza said, God knows that you will not fail, but your eyes shall be open, and you will become like unto God to know good and evil, for he wants you not to partake of it, so that he can remain superior to you. And it came to pass that in her heart Eve could feel that the spirit that gave the life to the cedar of the tree. And she felt sad in her heart that she had fallen short in the eyes of God. And she went and she felt the tree and she exclaimed with delight for it did feel all the good in her that the great holy one had put there wherever she went into the feelings of the tree and filled herself with the knowledge and the goodness that was in her by the hand of God in her creation and the feelings of the tree seemed to take away her sorrow that she had fallen short in the eyes of God and it seemed delightful to her and she went and she brought Adam and she said my husband this tree fills all the good that the Lord God has put into us in the day he created you. And if we partake of it, we can feel that we are as good as God. And Adam said, I know God has forbidden us to partake of the feelings of this tree. And he was greatly saddened, for he felt a gulf arising up between him and his rib. And this great loneliness began to come once again upon him and in his heart he cried out for the fear of the loneliness and they both partook of the feelings of the tree and she partook so she could become as good as God and he partook for fear of loneliness and it came to pass that when they had partaken of the tree the eyes of them were both open and they beheld that they had been lied to and had responded to the lie and in doing so they were not now like God but were strangers to him and when these things transpired it was a very sober day in Eden for the object of creation yea even that which was made in the image of God had acknowledged Semyaza to obey him and in this way the very image of God took upon themselves a, a portion of one who was rebellious toward God. And again in this way the power of Semyaza arose greatly for now his soul was become the element of wickedness and he was recognized by the image of God to be an alternative to God himself. And all the lying visions of those who followed after him were thus affirmed. But our first parents acted inadvertently. And the glory of Semyaza will be short-lived, as Adam and Eve did sin no more after their baptisms of purification. And it came to pass that in the course of time there arose one up who empowered Semyaza to fully be the opponent of God and to have the power to wage war against his purpose. And that man was Cain. And while the sins of our first parents were inadvertent, the sins of Cain were the intervention of his agency to establish and call force by the use of the element of wickedness that Semyaza could be the god of his religion in the occult. And, and Cain ruled over Semyaza 
and they entered into a pact in sorcery that Cain would establish in Yaza if he could gain the desires of his heart over his brother Abel. And it came to pass that Azazel, who is one of the Decadar Troy, the Fallen Watchers, and is inscribed tenth by his cunning, opened up to Cain the manner by which it could be accomplished that he could kill his brother without drawing near to him. And thus this thing would not be known, and the guilt of Cain would not come forth, and the thing would be kept a secret in the midst of the earth. And it came to pass that Cain prayed evil and hateful prayers, and he used the altar of his father, and he used Azazel as the element of wickedness to call forth death unto Abel. And it came to pass a stone of Azazel smote Abel insomuch that he died, and Cain had not come near unto Abel, and had done nothing but to pray his hateful prayers against him. And a falling star fell upon Abel and smote him, and he died. And Cain knew he could say that the thing had occurred, but not by his hand. But Semyaza had deceived Cain, for he had not revealed unto him that the thing could not be hidden from God. And Cain was called to account before him. And thus it was established by the intervention of agency that Semyaza and his religion would be the enemies to all things good and the worship of God in heaven. And in the end, as Cain has killed, ha and in the end, as Cain had killed with a rock, he also was killed by a rock, when the earth shook and his house fell upon him. And in this event, it was in the year that Adam returned to Eden, and the shaking of the earth was caused by all the Erkadershi, and they were rejoicing over Adam returning to his natural home. And it came to pass that the war increased and it grew, as there were many evil men who put their hand to, t to the task of affirming the lying visions of Semyaza and his band. And it grew until Semyaza took with him a third of the hosts of heaven, even to the number of the two hundred watchers who were bailed to follow after him. And it came to pass that one arose who was a descendant of Cain and his name was Lamech which means to be instructed by darkness and Lamech received instructions by the hand of the Decadur Troy starting with Semyaza himself and Semyaza desired to beget children and he chose Lamech for Lamech had two wives and he followed after the manner of the religion of Cain and he was the first to enter into the wickedness of having more than one wife. And Semyaza instructed Lamech that by the use of the element of wickedness, and by using a meteorite, and by the drinking of menstrual blood, he could conceive a child that was given by the power of the intervention of his agency, a lying vision according to the choosing of Semyaza. And it came to pass that Lamech entered into a pact with Semyaza, and he practiced, and he performed, and a child indeed was conceived, that was evil by its nature, and had the vision of wickedness that was given him by Semyaza. And the child was cruel, and had no remorse of conscience, and his mother was ashamed, and she feared that the knowledge of his conception would come to the people. And the other wife was jealous, and she began to noise abroad how the thing was accomplished. And it came to pass that Lamech began to fear that his secret would become known, and all his neighbors would rise up against him. 
So he arose up, and he slew the child in his fourteenth year. And shame arose upon Lamech in abundance, for he had not murdered to get gain, but for the sake of his oath with Simeaza, the dominion of Simeaza increased. For once the manner of the evil of Lamech was known, there were many who entered and to accomplish having children for the Decadertroi. And it came to pass that these children of the Decadertroi, who are called the Nephilim, spread violence and great pollutants across the face of the earth, and the war waxed great. And it was in its height at the time at the birth of Enoch, the seventh from Adam. And the land was filled with the visions of the glory of Semyaza, and there was sorcery and witchcraft and every kind of evil, and every man sought to take advantage of his neighbor. Now the doings after Nephilim part me. Now the doings of the Nephilim were after this manner. In the days of the Nephilim, who were called giants, all the earth was filled was havoc and one village of people would hate another and they would choose from among themselves a most wicked and powerful sorcerer and they would join to conceive a child by the use of the element of wickedness who would have the powers to destroy that which sustained or protected their neighbors and in this way the evil vision of the Nephilim would be as a weapon against their fellows then their enemies would in turn make an effort to conceive a child more powerful than they, and thus was every man against his neighbor, and the whole earth was filled with this violence. If hunters were fighting against fishermen, the Nephilim that they begat would curse and kill and devour the fish with sorcery and witchcraft, insomuch that the fishermen would perish for want of fish to eat and the hunters would gain power over them and the children of the watchers began to sin against the animals the birds and the fish of the sea and it came to pass in the space of only ten generations the people of the earth became ripe with iniquity by the hand of the decadertroi for as the Decadertroi went forth in their wickedness, they did so without many, any resistance, and they prospered and practiced at their will, because the kind heart of God in his purity made no allowance against evil, nor did he bring to mind, not, but his great delight and his love for his creation, and in their visions of their grandeur, of his love for them. You will see that the great and holy men and their ribs took the side of God and set their hand against the Decadertroi and Semyaza, and Enoch walked with God and was a mighty one to lay the foundation for the obedience to the will of Messiah. And Noah besought God in behalf of all the families of the earth and in this way brought forth the flood and he enabled the great and holy one to subdue those fallen ones who left their first estate and bury them in the earth out of his sight. And thus, when they were bound and reeling from the blow of the, of the flood, excuse me, the great man Shem established the covenant with all the Erkadershi, which is called Shabuah. And he, in this way, built into all the holy ones of heaven who dwell among men up upon the earth a resistance to evil and corruption and thus we see that it is by the hand of the holy order of the priesthood that was after the manner of Melchizedek that the intervention of the just began to turn the war against the Decadertroi and the brother of Jared was such a one. Now after I beheld all these things before the arm, I was astonished. And I walked with amazement for the space of 232 days before I approached 
to use the arm and throw him again. For I was very desirous to understand all these things that the Lord had brought to prepare my soul for this great work. <laughs> 